Good morning. And those of you that don't know me, I'm Greg Harvey. I'm a retired pastor, uh, and I've been in this church, my wife and I, and Justin got married a year ago. He's been gone for a year, but in 2018, we came and, um, you know, fell in love with uh, the church and, you know, fell in love with Pastor Wayne early on and been very close to him. Going to miss him an awful lot, you know, here, but... uh, uh, my son Justin, who used to be in the praise team here, is going to pray for me and for you right now. Go ahead. Dear Heavenly Father, uh, thank you for getting us all here safe today, Lord. Uh, we thank you for your provision and guidance, God. And just right now, uh, I know my dad already has the words that you gave him this morning, Lord, to uh, preach over this congregation. Uh, just give him the strength and wisdom and what, whatever he's preaching today is going to reach somebody here today, God. Um, and that it, it just speaks to someone, even if it's just one person. Um, and that you've, you've, you've given him the, the words and, and love and strength, God, uh, as, he, as he speaks to us all today uh, through you. And we love you, Lord, in your name. Amen. Thank you. So, um, 2018 we came and... We were sitting right over there, almost the same spot we sit every Sunday. I guess that just stuck. Um, and uh, we're sitting there, and, and up comes uh, Pastor Randy. And, hey, Greg, how you doing? I've known him 30-something years. And talked with him. Then his dad, Monty McCorder, came over and talked to me. And, and then uh, Pastor Gino came over and talked to me. And Justin said, Dad, is there anyone in this church you don't know? <laughs> so... Um, and on, on Tuesday at the Bible study, uh, the men's Bible study, uh, Pastor Gina was talking about being an encouragement, and we studied a little bit about uh, Barnabas, um, and uh, that, that, that word in the, in the Greek means son of encouragement, you know, and Paul had gone back home to Tarsus after his conversion, um, you know, with his trials, and Barnabas went over to Tarsus and got him and took him to Antioch, and and encouraged him. And if it wasn't for Barnabas, we might not have had a Paul, you know, the Apostle Paul, who wrote, you know, much of the New Testament. Uh, so, so uh, today you can give me a name, uh, Barnabas Greg, because what I want to do is, com- is, is encourage you today. Uh, I want to be a Barnabas. I want to come alongside you as, uh, as a member of this church and just, uh, you know, uh, to just love on you and encourage you. And um, there's uh, retired pastors in this church that can do the same. And uh, thank the Lord for our retired pastors here at this church uh, that you can come alongside and also your deacons and, uh, and the Mac. And uh, so, but don't call me Barney Fife because <laughs> he had to keep his bullet in his pocket and he wasn't very good with the gun. As you, if you've seen the shows, if you young folks haven't seen it, go watch the reruns of the, of the Andy Griffith show. Uh, so I, uh, I want to share with you today from the Bible some ways, not always, but some of the ways in which we can persevere, how to persevere. Uh, many times in my preaching ministry when I was a pastor, uh, I shared a lot of what things, but um, I was, the uh, feedback I got was, well, Pastor, you've told us what to do. How do we do it? And I'd like to share with you today how to persevere. How can you persevere? And uh, the, the irony of, of this is I was, I've been working on this sermon for two months. Um, a few months ago, Pastor Wayne asked me, do I have a, he called it a candy stick sermon. And I said, yeah, I've got a few of those. Well, then I went back and started doing some study. Um, there was a, a firefighters association that uh, wanted to invite a, a local pastor to come and preach, uh, not preach, but share a, a message to, to the firefighters. And he said, well, how long do you want me to preach? And he said, well, um, uh, you know, why does that matter? And he says, well, because if, if, if you want me to speak for about five minutes, I got to spend like 30 or 40 hours weeding out all the things I can't say, you know. He says, oh, okay, wow. And so then I uh, says, well, um, but if you want me to preach for about, you know, half an hour, I need to spend about 15 or 20 hours weeding out the stuff I'm not going to say. But if you want me to preach for an hour or an hour and a half, I'm ready right now. <laughs> so I'm not going to preach for an hour. And amen. <laughs> and uh, and uh, I, uh, I'm not going to preach the whole Bible, although if you look in your notes, you might think that. 
uh, look at all those scriptures. Uh, we're not going to do an in-depth study today. I just want to skim over some encouragement and some perseverance um, you know, with you today. Uh, so one of the ways to persevere is to fight the good fight. Um, in, in 2 Timothy, uh, I think we can put on the screen, uh, the 2 Timothy 4, 6 through 8 um, he says, for I am already being poured out like a drink offering, and the time for my departure is near. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. So, you know, fighting the good fight. Um, a lot of biblical scholars will just have just said, well, fighting the good fight is the fight of faith. Um, but he says at the end, I've kept the faith. And so looking at the, at the Greek there, the fighting the good fight is to fight, fight for, for good things, to fight uh, the good fight. So I'd like to just hone in on, on that phrase and then share uh, some scriptures with you. So what is the good fight? Uh, you know, the Bible has so many uh, ways that we can fight the good fight, um, but uh, one of the good fights is to fight for what is right, uh, to stand up uh, in the church and even in society and stand up for what's right. Um, it may cost you and me uh, sometimes. Um, years ago when I was uh, preaching on some topics that I had preached in before, uh, about that time uh, a political issue came up and um, and I kept preaching about that occasionally, and, and two or three of the church members came to me and said, you know, Pastor, you're bringing politics into the pulpit. I said, no, uh, they brought politics into my pulpit uh, when, they, when, they, when they start doing these uh, things that they do. Another good fight is to fight temptation. Um, another good fight is to fight spiritually for the souls of people. So there's three ways I'd like to share with you how you can persevere. Uh, number one, is uh, inspiration. Uh, another one is uh, determination. We'll get to that. And the third one is commitment. You see that in your notes. Um, so fill in your blank. Getting, getting your inspiration from the Lord. We need to get our inspiration from the Lord. Now it's good to get inspiration from people. And there are stories. I'm going to share a few people with you today about that. But our primary inspiration needs to come from the Lord. If we try to get it from other people, a lot of times that wears out in a few days. But if you get inspired by the Lord, it's forever. It's, it lasts and lasts. Um, in uh, 2 Timothy 3.16 it says, all scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. And if you've got your King James, it says, all scripture is inspired by God. And so that word inspire means, you know, in the spirit. And so God, uh, through his spirit, um, motivates us and encourages our hearts to, uh, to do that. So, um, so I want to encourage you. Uh, to get inspiration from godly people, but uh, to get your main inspiration from God and the guiding of the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. So a couple of verses I just want to share with you that are inspirational to me. Many of you love the Psalms. Many of you love other favorite uh, scriptures that you, that you get inspired from. Uh, when Paul said to the Philippian church, do everything without grumbling or complaining, that's not my favorite verse. <laughs> yeah. So, but I want to share with you, um, you know, on the screen, you'll see Romans 15, 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Boy, that's inspiring. That's a very inspiring verse. And uh, one of my favorite verses uh, is at the at John 14 through chapter 16 is the last words that Jesus spoke to the to the 11 and and and, and maybe possibly Judas was still there uh, and he shared with them some of the most amazing words in in the scriptures and some of the most amazing things in all of, of literature um, but at the end of that talk he says in John 16:33 I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Yay! Yay, God! Wow! 
You're on the winning team if you're a Christian. If you know Christ as your Savior and Lord, you're on the winning side. And uh, when you have trouble, uh, you know, just remember that the Lord has uh, overcome uh, the world. So there are golden nuggets of inspiration throughout the Bible. And I encourage you to get your spiritual shovel and go dig out those golden nuggets of inspiration that, uh, that God can help you with. Uh, so the second one is determination. Uh, number two, be determined with God's help. Um, there's a lot of determined people in this world uh, that don't know the Lord, and, and their determination at times has impressed me, but I've been impressed most by godly people whom, whom they go to the Lord for help to be determined. Uh, and I want to encourage you uh, to, to be determined. Um, you know, in the, in, the, in the movie, The Lion King, Simba is struggling with his determination uh, and struggling with his, uh, his past. And so Rafiki uh, talks to him. Watch this video. What was that? <laughs> the weather. <laughs> Very peculiar. Don't you think? Yeah. Looks like the winds are changing. Ah, uh, change is good. Yeah, but it's not easy. I know what I have to do, but going back means I'll have to face my past. I've been running from it for so long. Ow! Jeez, what was that for? It doesn't matter. It's in the past. <laughs> yeah, but it still hurts. Oh, yes, the past can hurt. But the way I see it, you can either run from it or learn from it. Ah, you see? So what are you going to do? First... I'm gonna take your stick. No, 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 no! Not your stick! Hey! Where are you going? I'm going back! Good! Go on! Get out of here! <laughs> so there are things that uh, we have to let go of in our past. You know, Paul talks about that in Philippians 3 about forgetting what's behind and moving towards what's ahead. But uh, sometimes it's good to look back at, uh, at, at uh, former victories. You know, in your life, the Lord may have had a time in your life where he was victorious and you were victorious with him. And sometimes when we are, are going through difficulty and we, when we want to persevere, sometimes the Lord may remind us and say, you remember back then when I was victorious with you uh, to, to inspire us to be determined uh, about the future? Now, a lot of people don't like history, so let's just pretend to be time travelers. You guys like to time travel? See, that sounds better than history because people go, history, ugh. Because, you know, a lot of our history teachers in school were very boring uh, and, I, and, and it's sad that that's what, that, that, that way because history uh, is a good thing to learn from. So we're going to look into the past 71 years ago, 55 years ago, one week ago, and then 1960 years ago. Uh, so Colonel Sanders, uh, some of you remember him. Um, uh, Harold Sanders, he was the... See, people don't know it's Kentucky Fried Chicken, but... They just say, oh, it's KFC. They don't even know what it stands for anymore. KFC. Because uh, now you can go get a burger there too. Uh, so, but, uh, you know, he was, uh, he started a restaurant, uh, a chicken restaurant a little bit earlier, but he didn't start his first KFC restaurant until he was 62 years old. Isn't that something? Uh, so he was determined, wasn't he? He was determined to, to, to be successful in the goal that, uh, that he had, and, and, and he's a good Christian man, was. He was a good Christian man. Uh, he loved the Lord, and he, 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 he helped people and served the Lord. Um, when I was growing up in Hong Kong as a missionary kid, he came, and, uh, came to our church in Hong Kong, and uh, we knew him right away. He looked just like his picture. <laughs> he had his white suit on and his, his black tie, and uh, he was the nicest, most personable person I had, had met, or one of, the, one of the nicest I had met. And uh, I never forgot that. Uh, so then later, when we came back to the States, I'm like, I know that guy. I met him. Uh, so, so my dear senior brothers and sisters, if you're past the age of 65 or 70, finish your bucket list. Um, if you don't have one, start one. 
You know, because some of you, I've heard some of you say when I meet you here at church, oh yeah, how's it going? And they go, I'm still vertical. So, so if you're still vertical, you know, serve the Lord and, and, and keep doing what, 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 what God can have you do uh, because of a, a man like Sanders who persevered and, and, and was determined, you know, to, uh, to, to see God's kingdom fulfilled. And he made a little money on the side, of course. Um, so... Um, don't give up as long as you're still vertical. I know some people who are Christians that are vertical and they're not dead yet and they still serve the Lord from their bed. Uh, they make phone calls. They, they, uh, they, they, uh, they write letters. They, 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 do, they do what they can do even though they might be bedridden. And so, see, that's easy for me to say because I'm 66 and in our church, we have a senior department, but we have a senior senior department. Did you know that? We've got some 90-year-olds around here. And uh, I thought, (laughs) so I thought, uh, boy, I can hang around them, and I'm a youngster, you know? And some some of you have told me that. Oh, you're 66? Oh, you're young. I said, well, thank you. So I try to hang out with the kids and the youth and the younger families, and I enjoy that very much. And I'm, I'm glad to know uh, a lot of our young families that the Lord has brought, you know, to our church. Uh, that our church is growing with young families and with children, and uh, I'm grateful for that uh, too. Uh, so another great determiner, or one who had a lot of determination, uh, was Martin Luther King. Um, Martin Luther King was determined to fight for the Amer- African-American civil rights and to share great and noble dreams for our nation. His favorite meal was pork chops, collard greens, yams, cornbread, and pecan pie. And uh, the last few years, Denise and I, on Martin Luther King's birthday, we eat that meal. And uh, so if you ever want to come around and, and, and try my southern cooking, uh, you know, you're welcome, but make your own. <laughs> uh, so we do that, and then I like to watch his speeches uh, that he that he gave, and I like to watch some of the newscasts where he was interviewed by the by the media, and I really like the "I Have a Dream" speech. That's a that's a great speech, but it wasn't just the speech or the words; it was the man who was determined to fight for civil rights for the African Americans in our country. Uh, the way that that our country in the past have treated uh, the African American community. Um, is a stain on our history, but let's move on, you know, because God has done great things in the African-American community in recent years, and they're thriving, and they're doing very well. There's still some issues, but, uh, but for the most part, uh, many of the African-American uh, community are achieving that dream that, uh, that Martin Luther King spoke about on that day. And then the day before he was assassinated, he spoke, he made a speech to the Sanitation Workers Union in Memphis uh, the night before he was shot down, shot and gunned down. And they call that, I've been to the mountaintop speech. And some of you may not have, have heard it. I encourage you to, to watch it and to listen. And in that speech, he said that there, would, that there was coming trouble for him, uh, but that he had been to the mountaintop and seen the promised land. You know, he was comparing himself to Moses. You know, Moses, God took him to a mountain there before the plains of Moab and showed him the land, but he didn't get to go in. And so Martin Luther King kind of di- obviously didn't know. He was kind of prophesying that he, he, he said he's seen the promised land, but he said, I may not get there with you, but we as a people will get there. We'll get to the promised land. And that was, his, that was another one of his, uh, his dreams. So I encourage you to be determined to stand up for those who are oppressed, even against all odds. So now, um, I'm a cowboy fan. Any cowboy fans? Yeah, all right, yeah. Any, any Lions fans? Yeah, I know Dave Gore, you know, he's a big Lions fan. Um, I, I'm sorry that the Lions lost last week. I'm sorry for you. See, but my team, the Cowboys, they've already out of it before that. So, um, so yeah, go Niners, huh? Yeah. So, Denise is a big 49ers fan. So, right now, I'm a 49ers fan because I like my wife to be happy. <laughs> And when the Dallas Cowboys and the 49ers are playing, there's a lot of voice raising in our house, but, you know, the best, the best team wins. So, um, so they, 
they have a they have a quarterback now that uh, that was the third string uh, last year over last year uh, quarterback and he was the last pick of the NFL draft number 262 they called him Mr. Irrelevant and that's not what a title to put on a person you know Mr. No one's ever called me irrelevant. They've told me I've said things that were irrelevant, but no one ever called me Mr. Irrelevant. And so here's this young man who last Sunday was determined to come from behind. And, and they did. They came from behind. I, I'm sorry, Detroit. You, you guys' team is getting better these last few years, and you deserve to go to the Super Bowl too, but not this year. But, but, uh, but, but so this year, the 49ers are going to go to the Super Bowl next week. And uh, so some of you are happy about that. And uh, so, so he, um, he was the, the, the last of the, of the draft pick. And uh, when I came up here, I, I didn't get to see the whole game, but in the second half, I was up here uh, with the discipleship class. But I told Denise on the way out the door, I said, your team has got to have to come up with a miracle. They're going to have to shut down the offense and score, score with your offense. And she goes, yeah. Well, when it was over on my way home, I listened to the radio and I heard they won. And I said, all right, it's going to be happy in my house tonight. <laughs> and so, uh, so I watched the highlights of the game and watched uh, uh, Brock Purdy run three great runs as a quarterback. Um, and so uh, he's a Christian man. And, uh, and he loves the Lord. And, and, and the opponent that he's going to play next Sunday is also a Christian man, Patrick Mahomes of the Chiefs. And so two Christian men who are outspoken about their faith are going to compete against each other uh, next week. And some of the fans who are praying and asking God for their team to win are going to get the answer no. <laughs> B- because someone has to win and someone has to lose. And uh, this is uh, a little bit after the game. Watch this video. How did that journey get you ready for me? Yeah, it's uh, like honestly, I think it's just a testament to God and where he's taken me in life. Um, I've never been the biggest, the fastest, the strongest or any of that. Um, I feel like I've always sort of had to fight for what I get and uh, work for what I get. Um, But God's always given me an opportunity, whether that was in high school, college, and then obviously in the NFL. Getting drafted last, people, you know, overlook you and all kind of stuff. And then. All you need is an opportunity and when watching, see what he does. You know, I put my faith and trust in him, and he's gotten me where I'm at. So um, when I'm down 17 at half, honestly, I'm just like thinking, like, all right, God, you, you're taking me here, and um, win or lose, I'm going to glorify you. And, and uh, that's my peace. That's the joy. That's the, the steadfastness. That's where I get it from, and that's the honest truth. So I, I leaned into that, and sure enough, we were able to come back. All right. Thank you, guys. Thanks. You know, it isn't really about football, is it, for him? It's about God. It's about the Lord. And he's just, you know, he's just playing football. And, uh, but what a great testimony to go on the national media from, 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 from a guy like that who, who has every right to proclaim and to show that it's the Lord. It's about the Lord. Giving him his fight. You know, giving him his, uh, his, uh, his perseverance. Uh, so I want to encourage you. Sometimes you may be behind in the first half in your life. Uh, but you can, come, you can come from behind with God's help. And, and, and don't measure it by your own standards or the world's standards because you want to hear the words from Jesus, well done, you good and faithful servant. Because that's the, that's the bottom line, uh, you know, for that. So with regard to uh, 1,960 years ago, um, the Apostle Paul, I looked all over the Internet for his photograph. And, and I couldn't find it, but I found an artist rendition that looks pretty good. Looks almost photographic, doesn't it? So this is somebody's rendition of the Apostle Paul, and he's, he's writing, you know, his New Testament. He doesn't know he's writing his New Testament. He's writing letters, you know, to the churches. And, uh, you know, they could have called him, uh, you know, Paul the Barnabas too, wasn't he? Isn't Paul a great encourager in the Word when you read, read God's Word? You know, sometimes he, uh, he corrects, sometimes he rebukes, but uh, what a great encourager that he, he was and how God uh, helped him, um, you know, to be determined. Uh, so he was determined to face difficulty in 2 Timothy 2, uh, 2, and three, 2, 2 Timothy 2, verse 3. 
It says we are, we are to endure hardship as a good soldier uh, for Jesus Christ. In that, same passage, in that same passage, he also compared uh, the Christian for Timothy to be like a farmer. So be a soldier and be a farmer. Um, and so we're to be good soldiers uh, for Jesus Christ in the face of difficulty. Uh, Paul was also determined to share the gospel with anyone that came across his path. In, in Philippians 1.13... It says, as a result, it has become clear throughout the whole palace guard and to everyone else that I am in chains for Christ. So uh, he preached to his enemies. He preached to uh, the ones that had him in prison for, for proclaiming the gospel, um, for, for being a preacher of God's word. He was put in prison. They wanted to shut him up. Well, let's put the guards there to make sure uh, he's, he's not going to preach. Well, guess what? He preached to the guards. <laughs> And it's not in the scriptures, but the church tradition from our Catholic friends in, in the writings was that, that a guard comes in, sits with the Apostle Paul, Paul leads him to Christ. So they say, well, get that guy out of there, you know? And so they put another guard in him, there and they led him to Christ, you know? And get him out of it. About the third time or fourth time, they just said, just let him stay in there so he doesn't convert anyone else. <laughs> and so... So he, he was determined to share the gospel with anyone that came across his path. And uh, we should be inspired to be that determined um, as well. So um, Paul also understood uh, about our fight is not against human beings, but against evil spirits of Satan. Paul was determined not to fight with people, but to fight through spiritual warfare and prayer. Um, in uh, Ephesians 6, 12, it says, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. And we so quickly have uh, fights and wrestle with humans. And uh, we need to get on our knees. Uh, isn't that song that we sing in here? Um, when I fight, I fight on my knees. Um, so, um, I need to do that myself more with every relationship, you know, that I have. Um, and then he was determined to go through even the worst of problems. He endured many beatings and dangers. Um, second Corinthians 11, um, verse 23 says, are they servants of Christ? I am out of my mind to talk like this. I am more, I have worked much harder been in prison more frequently, been flogged more severely, and been exposed to death again and again. Five times I received from the Jews the 40 lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was pelted with stones. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent a night and a day in the open sea. I've been constantly on the move. I've been in danger from, was that rivers? Rivers, in, dan in danger from bandits, in danger from my fellow Jews, in danger from Gentiles, in danger in the city, in danger in the country, in danger at sea, and in danger from false believers. I have labored and toiled and have often gone without sleep. I have known hunger and thirst and have often gone without food. I have been cold and naked. Besides everything else, I face daily the pressure of my concern for all the churches. Isn't that good? See, when I read, when I, when I read that, I'm like going, I don't have it so bad. I mean, some of you have been through some bad things, you know? Uh, and some of you recently have been through some hard things. Uh, and I'm not making light of that, but whenever I've been through hard things and I've read this, I'm like saying, wow, you know, he, he really had it bad. But if you, just, if you just read that, you might think, well, poor fella. But he didn't think of himself that way. He just, he just was determined to go through those problems, you know, for the glory of God. And the third one is commitment. And I want to encourage you, fill in the blank, make, make godly commitments and keep them. And, and there's, there's numerous of godly commitments that, that are in the Bible, uh, but I just want to talk about two of them um, for now. 
um, for the believers, for you who are, who are God's people, make a commitment to serve the Lord. If you haven't done that before, um, I want to encourage you to make a commitment as a believer to serve the Lord. Um, and, and, and don't sit back on your salvation and your ticket to heaven. I mean, you've trusted Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you're going to go to heaven. And I encourage you to, uh, to serve the Lord. And uh, I like to call what's the spaghetti method. You know what the spaghetti method is? When you think the spaghetti's almost done, you take a piece out and you throw it on the wall. And if it sticks, it's done. If it doesn't stick, it kind of falls off. You cook it some more. So I like the spaghetti method when it comes to serving the Lord. You know, try something. If it doesn't work, try something else. If you try something else, if you try something and it doesn't work, don't get discouraged. Don't say, oh, I'm not going to serve the Lord anymore. That was too tough. Well, maybe find something else. And um, it's kind of a joy as a, pa a retired pastor because I can do whatever ministry I'd like as the Lord leads me. And if I don't like something, I can just tell him to go away. <laughs> say, oh, I'm not going to do that anymore. Oh, you're not going to do that anymore? Yeah, no, I'm not on the payroll. So, so uh, you know... Um, you know, a lot of, I heard a preacher once say uh, that, uh, that he was talking to his, his deacon body and he said, you know, I found out something about myself and about you that, uh, that uh, I'm paid to be good, but you're good for nothing. <laughs> so, so, yeah, I'm good for nothing now because I'm, I'm not on the payroll and uh, uh, it, it's, it's been a little painful, but you know, I've said no to some things in this church, uh, believing God has something else for me, and, and it's a privilege to serve the Lord in this church. Um, so I want to encourage you as a believer to, to make that godly commitment to, that you'll say in your heart today, Lord, I'll be your servant. I'll serve you. Uh, and then for those of you that don't know the Lord, the great godly commitment is to make a commitment to become a disciple of Jesus Christ, to become his follower um, you know, going to church is great, but it's not going to get you to heaven. The only way you get to heaven is to know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Uh, there's, I've asked people sometimes, I like to use the question, can you describe your relationship with God to me? And they'll say something like, well, my uncle's a preacher. I say, well, that's great, but what about you? Can you describe? And, and if they don't have one, they'll, they're tell, they'll tell you. So, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, a conversation opener that I like to use to kind of talk to them. Would you like to have a relationship with God? Uh, and you can do that through Jesus Christ. Um, oh, I forgot to read Joshua 24. Is it up there? Yeah. But if, this is the previous thing. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the God's, your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in, whom, uh, in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. So that's, that's, for, the, that's, for, the ho that's for the house of the Lord. And then for, for a person that needs to know Christ, uh, let's read uh, Mark 9, 23. He says, uh, then he said to them all, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world and yet lose or forfeit their very self? And so when Jesus uh, presented his message of good news, it was about discipleship. And we use discipleship in the church as growing in the Lord uh, but also the New Testament teaches about even being a disciple is to uh, take up your cross. You know, that means to die to self, uh, to, to, to give up your life to the Lord. And then other places it talks about, you know, turning away from your sins. And in Romans it says that if you uh, call upon the name of the Lord, you'll be saved. If you confess Jesus as your Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So, so reach out to God today in prayer, a beginning prayer of your new life, inviting Jesus to come into your life, and the Holy Spirit comes and lives inside of you uh, to, to, uh, to help you in the process of growing before we, 
before we go and get to heaven. So um, at the end of the service, we have what we call doors of encouragement. And if you would like to know more uh, about uh, giving your life to Christ, then when the service is over, just come over here and there'll be somebody uh, that you can talk to. So, um, so we're in this fight, you know, fighting the good fight. Um, and it's good to be encouraged to fight that good fight. Um, any, uh, any Lord of the Rings fans in here? Uh, you know, so J.R.R. Tolkien, a Christian um, a professor at, at, uh, at Oxford University, was at the Modlin College and was a contemporary of C.S. Lewis, and they were friends. And uh, C.S. Lewis was encouraged to write his trilogy, which he did, and it's kind of obscure. Uh, then, but later he wrote of the other writings uh, that he wrote. Uh, but J.R.R. Tolkien uh, wrote uh, several books, but, uh, but with relationship to this idea of the Lord of the Rings, which has influenced literature uh, throughout the world uh, as far as genre and themes. But um, in his introduction to his, his book, The Hobbit, he says that, uh, that none of this is, is uh, uh, a Christian in nature saying he's not preaching the Bible, but boy, did he work in the truths of God's word in his writings. Uh, and so the, the Lord of the Rings, uh, if you look at it, there are spiritual overtones you know, in there. And um, at the end of the story, this is a spoiler alert, where uh, Aragorn, uh, the returning king, and the, uh, the sons of Gondor and Rohan have gathered together at the Black Gate, of Mordor uh, to try to defeat them, but what they figured out, they were gonna be doing something else. Um, but they, they came to that spot, and um, watch this video. And just in case you haven't seen that before, or you haven't, don't know what he says, he says, hold your ground, hold your ground, sons of Gondor, of Rohan, my brothers. I see in your eyes the same fear that would take the heart of me. A day may come when the courage of men fails, when we forsake our friends and break the bonds of fellowship, but it is not this day. An hour of wolves and shattered shields, when the age of men comes crashing down, but it is not this day. Today we fight. And by all you hold dear, all that you hold dear on this good earth, I bid you stand, men of the West. And I want to encourage you today to stand for Christ and to, and, and, to, and, to, and to stand in the perseverance that God would help you to persevere for his sake and his glory. Uh, in Romans it says, if God is for us, who can stand against us? And also in Romans 8 it says, for we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. In verse 8 of 2 Timothy, we read earlier, says, Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. May the Lord bless First Baptist Church of Fair Oaks to rise to new heights of the Lord's glory. 
for the praise and honor of our Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to have prayer now, and um, when that prayer is over, uh, I want to encourage you, our deacons and uh, Ministry Accountability Council and their spouses uh, will be here with you to talk with you and to have prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the precious and wonderful name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, and through your Holy Spirit. We thank you that we've been called today to be in your house to worship you and to hear a a word from you. And Lord, I pray that you would uh, speak to the hearts of of, uh, First Baptist Church today, that you would minister to them. And uh, we just pray, Lord, for um, all of this to be honoring and glorifying to you. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.